Hi there and welcome to our channel. If you're new here, we're Mia and Ryan and we've been living and traveling Australia in vans for two years now. Our first van was a lot smaller, but it was four wheel drive. It was a Mitsubishi Delica. And after building that, we knew exactly what we wanted when we moved to a bigger van. This van is a 2010 Mercedes Sprinter. It's a long wheelbase and it's a 516 diesel model. So it has a GVM of five ton and dual rear wheels. It's also got dual sliding doors and no windows in the side of it. We've been living in this one for just under a year now. So I thought it was about time to show you around it. Before we start, I do want to mention that when we built this van, it was for three in mind. So the two of us plus the child that I was pregnant with at the time. But unfortunately, Aiden did pass after a few hours of being born. So he's no longer with us but you'll notice throughout the van build that there were some components there that were obviously there to accommodate an infant or small child. But anyway, having said that, let's get started. Hello and welcome to our home. First off, you'll see that we've got a very long step here in the Sprinter. And what we did was we made our bench come over slightly so we could have a bit more room. And we've got a little bit of shoe storage here. We just like to keep that open because it's just really easy to grab our running shoes. We can fit two pairs in there. Could probably fit more, but that's comfortable for us. So come around here. We've got these lovely light switches. So with our lights, we've got eight and they are LEDs, just caravan lights I think we used four on this half and four on the other half. So we wanted to separate the way that they're controlled. So we've got this dimmable controller here. <laughs> and you can see there, I don't know if you can see, but yeah, so we've got it controlling this half and then we've got the bedroom half as well on the other side. All right, so next we've got our overhead cab storage. So up here, we've kept this open as well. That way we can just access everything. I know a lot of people build like a bit of a cover here and have a bit of a um, door on it, but this is way more accessible for us. And generally nothing falls out unless we're going on like a really, really bumpy road and it's uphill. So because this kind of slopes downwards, it's all good. So we just keep our towels, um, beach blankets, chairs, hammock, backpacks and my toiletry bag up here and we've just used the old sorry not the old the existing screws with a bracket to be able to keep this in and here as well and then just cut this board kind of flush with close enough yeah we decided to put our rail up the top here. Some people probably think that's a bit annoying, but basically we're in a stealth camper here. So if we put a rail from here, we're gonna have all this light coming through. So by putting the rail up the top, it means when these are closed over, there's no light coming out from inside the van to be seen outside. And we've just secured it with some Velcro bits at the sides here. So as I said earlier, this is our second van build and we had a smaller van before. In that van, obviously we didn't have a toilet or shower. Well, some people have a toilet. We never thought we really needed it. In this van, we do have a toilet. Um, we just chose to have a cassette toilet because we only use it for number ones and it's mostly at night time anyway. So we keep that down here. It was originally going to be on sliders, but we were just really pushed for room at this point. Um, so all we do is it's got like a little ramp here <laughs> to make it easier and it's got a handle on it anyway so we just pull it out at night time and have it kind of in this area so you're kind of blocked off from seeing anything down from over there okay so you'll notice when I pull the toilet out there we do have these little hooky things here so we've actually got push to open drawers in our kitchen so when we go around corners and stuff, unless we have them locked in, because the, there's so much weight in there, it pushes them back and then pushes them out again. So we end up with really slammy drawers. So we worked out this pin system, one screws and that one just opens. And I'll just show you here. And that means we can just easily open and close. 
so we've got five drawers in total. I haven't cleaned them, sorry. Um, so this bottom one holds all our sauces and pretty much all of our cooking equipment. Um, it even fits like a little blender and stuff, little stick blender. Um, this one's our pantry drawer. This keeps all our cans and things. Actually, I'll open it right up because they are quite big. It goes a little bit further back as well. And then in here we keep our cups and plates. Here is like our spices and tea towels and in here is like cutlery and scissors and some other things. Here we have a nice big sink. In our last van we didn't have a sink in our kitchen because we didn't feel like we needed it and I still stand by that. I think it would have been a waste of space. Uh, we just used a collapsible bucket and that was sweet. But we chose a big sink in here. We can fit it and originally we were going to be like bathing a child in here so that's why we chose that it's 35 is it 35 or 40 by 40 I think. oh okay so this one was 40 by 40 it's quite large it's got like your normal drainage and stuff and we chose this faucet because it's got two settings so you've got the spray setting and then just the tap setting so it's not splashing everywhere and we actually have it so it can swing outwards as well it also has this retractable thing and I think it goes about a meter a meter or something. So what we have as an option because we don't have a shower is we can open this door and just swing that outside and oh it's windy. Have a shower out there if we need to. And honestly we've only used that a few times. So up the top here, we've got our kitchen cupboard, small storage for goods. There's coffee stuff. And we've got our little fruit basket. We, Which stuff falls out of all the time. It does, unfortunately. So we keep bread in there as well. This wasn't planned. There just happens to be a nice gap here where our cutting board fits. So instead of trying to make your bench fit into your van if you have a sprinter you'll know they're quite curved and this is the widest part or just down a little bit further is the widest part because this is the metal so, yeah the metal sticks out by about just over an inch but yeah you can use that as cutting board storage if you want in total we have six overheads and we chose the cane i know it's like a really aesthetic thing that people are doing these days but uh, we thought it'd be good for our items to be able to breathe we a lot of the time I'm wearing a beanie now but most of the time we are in warmer climates where things get moldy really easily so we just thought it's better for our stuff to breathe than to sweat inside these cupboards next we have our air fryer which we absolutely love you'll notice there's some tea towels in there and that's to stop the excess rattling this one's really good because it fits in such a small space, but you can also take it out and put it on the bench top if you need to, if you're gonna be using it for a bit longer. We do have some heat wrap, I think that's what it's called, up in there, up in the top there, just to stop it from damaging the bench if we're using it for an extended period. And we've just got the 85 litre King's fridge, pretty much the same as the Bushman's, so yeah. I know, each to their own. It fits so much in it and it also has this tiny little freezer compartment which works fine for us. We didn't have a freezer in our last van so this is perfect for us and it's so, so much room. We, no matter what we get, we can always fit everything in. Our last fridge was only 40 litres, I think. 32. Was it? <laughs> So our last fridge was only 32 litres, so this is a dream. You'll notice down the side here, we've also got our induction cooker. That has been awesome because we did used to use gas and we've got so much electricity, like for free from the sun. We thought like, why would we keep spending money on gas when we can just use the induction cooker? And that's been great. And a single burner is fine for us because we just use a rice cooker for our staples like potatoes rice and pasta and that so that works really well for us always got plenty of power so we wanted to keep all of our electrical system pretty much all in the one spot so we made this big box 
to house it all. We've got a 300 amp hour lithium battery and a 3000 watt inverter to run 240 appliances. So there's a vacuum cleaner <laughs> charging there at the minute and that runs the air fryer and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. We can also run, we've got a, a hot water system that's electric and it can run off 12 volt if you've got a bit of time or if you want to heat up quickly, you can do it off 240 volt as well. So yeah, that all runs. There's different bus bars and um, fuse block and stuff in there. I was using auto circuit breakers, but it changed them to proper fixed fuses because they weren't reliable. Solar comes from the roof. There's 460, 480 watts of solar comes into a double pole breaker and then the actual DC DC charger is mounted under the seat here. So the solar feeds into that and also the engine power from the alternator comes in from that. And I noticed that this gets quite hot while driving and whenever it reaches 65 degrees it cuts down the power. So I've actually put a fan in there which blows underneath and keeps it cool so it ends up you can get full charge it doesn't throttle it at all so for the hot water system we were really stuck for places to actually fit it and it's not ideal but the only place is underneath the sink and yeah it's a bit of a tight squeeze in here so I'll, I'll get under and show you what it's like so you can actually see the bottom of the hot water system is um, just hanging down under here and it's it has pretty heavy duty brackets that need bolted in so it's not ideal but we had to put these big ugly bolts in the way and that jerry can is just whenever it's the hot water system is running uh, there's just like a overflow goes in there so like you can see there's not really much water in it that only needs emptied every few weeks as in it doesn't even fill up actually, it, it, we just empty it out every few weeks. The sink plumbing doesn't take up too much room, but you can see that the hot water system comes pretty close and there's really not much room in this side either. So, um, it's pretty jam packed in there. And there's the brackets. So these switches on the side here are for the water pump and the hot water system. I wanted those so I didn't have to constantly open this box because sometimes you just flick the hot water system on while driving. So it's pretty handy to have those there. And there's also a lot of the power cables to go to different parts of the van. They run from the box and go in underneath the step because there's quite a bit of space there. And then they'll run down the back. On, on both sides of the van um, so we've got power for the fridge and the air fryer right so you'll probably notice that under here we had this huge open space so originally that was going to be the bed for our child because I was pregnant when we were doing this build but now we have a full-size bin a full-size clothing hamper and just like a lot of room for just random things we've got a tiny washing machine in behind here and yeah we just keep toilet paper some a few pieces of clothing that we want easy access to all hung up and we've got this little shelf system here for surplus food and toilet paper and baby wipes van life essential um yeah, we also keep our remote for our fans. We have two Max Air fans, one at the back, one at the front, and we just use them to get a bit of airflow through the van. You'll notice our van has no windows. We have two sliding doors, which is great for a breeze, but it also creates like a wind tunnel. So sometimes we like to just have one open and then keep these vents open, especially at nighttime. If we can just have these vents open, then that works for us. Um, and yeah, so we keep one remote here. Uh, we've got this little storage thing here. Everything in here is all clothes and things. So we have two each. I have these two. Ryan has the first and last one. They fit heaps like... It's a bit messy. Uh, a lot of my clothes are in the hamper right now. But all my clothes essentially fit 
up here as long as I keep them all neat in these and we have a few in these cushions down here with these cupboards as well we put these gastrots on these are so cheap off Amazon I highly recommend getting them from Amazon rather than Bunnings because at Bunnings I think they're like 14 bucks each or something and on Amazon I got 12 for 50 or 12 for 40 or something like that so they've been amazing and they you can set them so you can get them just the right height we needed them at this height because we've got these um, knobs on here and we didn't want them smashing the lights um, like this cupboard here yeah. didn't want it smashing the light or anything when it comes up so you can set it at the height you want you'll see in a lot of van builds people will put one gas strut in but we thought that might warp the ply a bit so we didn't want to do that we can just use two gas struts and that works for us and also we've got these oh, yes. little uh, clips but you really need to make sure they're adjusted well like I've had to pack them with washers to make sure that they actually catch and we had one on each cupboard at the start but they kept popping open so I had to put two in but since then and since they've all been adjusted that actually is a really good snap with it this van came with a big cargo barrier here like a metal cage and it was the brackets extended all the way out to here and there was a hole in the roof with a like threaded uh, nut insert so we wanted to use that to put these d-rings on and they're really really handy for just hanging anything up especially for here this one's above the sink so it can ha hang wet stuff up and they're actually strong enough to loop the hammock into so say there's a you know a tree out there or something you only need one because we can use this d-ring in the van as the other anchor point so yeah they've been really useful we've also put two of them at the back here um they're just in a similar thing there was a threaded part into the van this one's actually bent a bit because the two of us were swinging on the hammock one day but it still <laughs> <That> holds <is. laughs> this here is our seating area as you can see there is so much room can put my arms in all different directions which is lovely we have a big chase here which is so much room really good i have um, to sit with my legs up there but yeah it's still comfortable there's like a dirt mark here where ryan's feet go <laughs> this here was an afterthought we had nowhere to just easily put a coffee or something so ryan built this <laughs> a few weeks ago and now we have somewhere to put our coffees when we're sitting here. And now we use it every day. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got this big L-shaped area because we wanted enough room to just be able to chill in the van, like especially on rainy days and stuff. Um, it's just nice to feel like you have a proper living space. We have these comfy cushions. Like I said, they keep all our excess clothes, jumpers and that kind of thing. This one keeps our big doona or duvet, where, depending where you come from. <laughs> We both say it differently. <laughs> the advantage of this area is as well that we have all this storage space underneath. So in here, these are really light cushions as well. Um, I just pull that forward. In here we just keep books and fly gun and this is normally where the vacuum lives. I've got some fins in there. A lot of that is actually the wheel well. So the wheel well, because this is a dual wheel sprinter, it comes out to about here. So it's not a perfect space for like- Storage. <laughs> you can't really use it for much else. Yeah, it's very curved as well. So yeah, that wheel arch comes all the way pretty much to these. It's really wide. So that was pretty hard to work around as well. And I'll just show you what we did underneath here. So, one big cushion, three compartments of storage. So we've got this skinny one down the end here. That's where our gas stove is. We've got a spare suitcase, which has got a few items in it, work boots and stuff. Um, spare gas, cast iron, jumper leads, 
all that fun stuff. So essentially this is our garage. Um, hoses, tools, uh, and that's a spare water jerry can, 20 litre, which would fit in there as well. And I've got floor mats, more tools. Water filter, and then in the last one, uh, more tools, <laughs> diving equipment, more tools, fly screen. Heaps of tools, yeah. <laughs> which have been essential as well. Yeah. Yoga mat. And believe it or not, we have actually fit a paddle board in here as well. And I'll take you around there later on um, to show you where that fits. It's an inflatable one. That's why it fits. The beauty about the way that we've done this area is that we're able to access all this stuff like tools and all that kind of stuff from the inside as well as the outside when you can only access things from the outside it really limits what you're doing especially if you're stealthing or if it's raining or whatever sometimes you just want to access stuff from inside and not have to go all the way outside to get them so we really like that um now you're probably thinking where the hell do we eat if we've got this large area and we have a well you've probably seen this little um, mount here we have a lagoon table it's quite large and also kind of doubles as our bed head to stop our pillows from falling back so I'll show you how we fit that together normally I just put these pillows down a bit and this is our table here so it just lives there it's held in snugly the legs for the lagoon mount are mounted on the back of it yep so they just stay there permanently and all I do is come here, grab it out, and take the leg off. And it's not normally that hard. <laughs> and that's our mount there. Um, after a while, Ryan put this little bracket here um, because the table's probably too big for the mount. It's, it's a hundred percent too big. There yeah. are guidelines on how big it should be. <laughs> so I put this little L bracket just to hold it, and then it's it's actually solid. You can you can lean on it, whereas before you couldn't really lean on it. So so that's perfect for us. The seat height is perfect, and yeah, that works really well. We can do stuff on the laptop here. We eat here. We just, yeah, it's just not a nice thing to have when you've got such a large area to be able to use. All right, I'll put this away now. <laughs> okay. So because I fitted this L bracket, it means the table has to go to the same height every single time. Uh, instead of just putting a mark on this or whatever, because this can actually slide down right to the floor, um, I put a bolt and locked it in place so now whenever we slide the leg in it only goes to that height which is the perfect height for this to be level so so ingenious our bed is a murphy bed and we originally were going to do it with proper murphy hinges and gas struts and stuff but the more we looked into it it just got so complicated working out the weights and um and expensive yeah really and, and how we were going to mount the rotating hinge thing like you can see down here we don't actually have that much space either side <laughs> to mount so we ended up simplifying the whole lot and just putting one really long hinge well it's actually three piano hinges so they're 600 millimeters each and they're slightly heavier duty option that you can just get in bunnings and this bed frame is actually uh, the bottom of a bunk bed. Um, so seen it on Facebook Marketplace. It's actually really lightweight, so it's pretty thin steel. And then there's like a, a wire mesh behind this, um, just to support the mattress. So really, really lightweight. And we wanted the back of the bed to be able to breathe. So all in here is open, and then it's just got this like woven sort of textured fabric that's really breathable 
and then we just made a bit of a frame to make it look half decent but it's really really light and because it's so light we don't need gas struts so it sits up there nicely but whenever you're driving it, it wants to move back and forth so we tried a few things but the easiest was just to have like a, a bungee that holds it in tight against the wall um, so to let the bed down you just take the tension off that and it drops <laughs> with me not in here <laughs> uh, all of our because of obviously gravity <laughs> all of our pillows and blankets just stay down there there's plenty of room and the mattress kind of just squishes them in so with the pillows in behind there that actually stops the mattress going further in because the first time I drove it, I test drove it with the mattress and stuff in, but there was no pillows. And I went around the corner and the thing fell in, which dropped the tension on this and the whole bed came crashing down. Which is also why I've got a little cable tie here, just to keep keep the loop tight, you know? Yeah. So, but it's worked really well. Uh, also important to note that we have a foam mattress as well. If you couldn't do this with a spring mattress, um, it'd just be way too heavy and you couldn't do it with ply on the bottom. It'd just be way, way too yeah, heavy. It's, it's right on the limit. I wouldn't want it any heavier to, to pick up because it's kind of awkward once, you know, you have to put your hand oh. sorry, like down here to grab it. So yeah, yeah. any heavier it would be. This is what the bed and bedroom area look like when the bed is all down. In behind the bed as well, we do have a charging port. That way we can charge things while we're sleeping. If you do have any questions about our van layout or how or why we've done anything in this build, please leave us a comment below and we'll try and answer any questions you have as best we can. Over here, we also have the charging port, what are they called? Just USB. Just a USB one. It looks like a cigarette lighter thing, but we've got the USB-C and the USB-A. That's our other light switch, and we've got a temperature gauge for the van as well. All right, so coming to the back now, I'll take you through the garage. Because you can access this from the inside, you can also just lift up here to quickly grab something. But if you need to, you can open this up, grab these big boxes, tools, like any heavy bulky items, you can just slide them straight out. And we've got these covers that pop off too. So we just use little picture hooks here. Did that a lot in the old van as well, it worked fine. There's the paddle board. Can't tell, but, <laughs> and we also have a little gazebo in there as well. So these are just bits of wood with like a square cut out of them and they hold the table in place. And it doesn't rattle because of the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got two sliding doors. We don't really use this one too much. It does have access, but generally I find myself just running around the other side. Um, so in here, I just keep a load of blocks for leveling the van out. It's handy, I can just jump out. I usually only need to do one side or just the back. So I just take those out and stack them up like that. And you can actually get a decent bit of height. Um, in here, we've got a picnic table and another side screen. And then we've also got a side table here. We've used it maybe used it three times. Yeah, it's just too handy to cook inside the van, so yeah. There's a couple of things that I forgot to mention, and we did go over quickly the, about the cargo barrier that used to be here. The reason we removed that is, like I said earlier, we do do a lot of stealth camping, um, so it's just easy for us to slip from the back to the front. I know we've got this seat here, but it's pretty easy for us. We're not big people, so easy for us to get from the, the front to the back and um, without any issues and then we just close the curtains up for the night so as well as us being able to move from the front to the back 
it means if we're if we're driving along and we've forgotten to pin something or lock something down properly before we head off it means if we can hear it we can just quickly pull over and slip into the back and sort it out real quickly and get on our way in addition to that underneath well underneath the van under this seat so down here we also have a compressor and we used to have one mounted underneath the old van as well and we used to go for, through river crossings and stuff and it always worked perfectly so we thought we'd do the same in here to save space as well well that brings us to the end of our van tour if you've got any questions you can write them down below and next week we'll be back to our usual weekly travel vlogs <laughs>